up, Media Engine Squad? It's your boy, Fear Boy. This is coming back with a brand new video for y'all. So, in today's video, we actually gonna be heading to East Texas to check out this clean convertible. I ain't gonna tell y'all what it is. It's gonna be a clean convertible. If you're not following me on YouTube, Snapchat, or TikTok, please do so if you're born in Square 86. Also, please follow me on my brand new Instagram page at 214FitArrow Guy. And if you have not already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. Because why? I'm the only guy that's going to bring you Ponex Fierro footage and Chevrolet Corvair footage. And also, please triple smash that like button for you more. Because, man, you already know I ain't going to keep on dropping bangers after bangers after bangers after bangers after bangers. And I go on. You know what it is, man. So, yeah. So, right now, we're actually heading to East Texas. Um, we on the road right now. Uh, we should be there shortly. Hey, y'all going to love this car today. Y'all all know what it is. Where well, I will be picking up the camera when I get to the location. All right, man. So, Ray, tell me a little bit about the car. So, tell me, um, tell me what year it is. Tell me what model it is. Tell me how many years that they made the car. You know, tell me, tell, 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 please tell me a little bit about this car. Okay, this is a, uh, a 1965 uh, Chevrolet Corvair. It's the mar It's a uh, it's a Corsa, uh, which is a uh, what's a, more like a high performance type type car at the time. Mm -hmm. They came in two variants. They came in a, uh, a four barrel, uh, 140 horsepower, and they actually came with a, uh, a turbo, 180 horsepower. Okay. Uh, they came in basically a convertible configuration. You get it in a coupe, and they all pretty much came in with a four-speed four transmission. All right. Um, so they have some really cool options. The difference between uh, the Corsa and the regular, like the Monza Corvair, is uh, the Uh, had a tachometer, had a head temperature gauge, yeah. uh, had a clock. Uh, so it, it was, it's a little different than the uh, than, than the standard Corvair um, as far as the uh, the dash. And this one has a uh, unique feature: it has the the adjustable steering wheel. Wow. Yeah. So this is this was an option uh, on on these cars. Okay. I don't know if you can get these on on a Monza now, but I. I, I don't remember. I, I wouldn't know, but I know on the, on the, on the uh, courses, this is a, a nice option to have. Uh, this will have an AM AM radio. Uh, it's pretty much uh, uh, standard on, on on these kind of cars. Okay. Uh, but they were uh, a little different. A little different badging. They have little little seat for Corsa. Yeah, of course they have. 
back here to show you what it was. Either had a, a 140 or a, or a turbo <coughs> 180. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you an idea. Yeah, that's on a Chevrolet, uh, the 140 engine was not specifically made just for uh, for uh, horses. You can get this engine on a regular Monza. Okay. So it's you know, and in that respect, it, it was available throughout the most of the line of the Corvairs. Yeah. <coughs> but this has a uh, four four carburetors. <coughs> Should be, um, uh, so it's 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 a pretty neat setup. Um, uh, they're pretty much trouble free if you take care of them and maintain them. Um, it's, it's like any other other car. Things do happen. Yeah, and see, right, and so that's why I always say, you know, or for what reason? I mean, it's it's almost like I understand what they're looking at. What they got to realize, a lot of folks really do not know, but actually, you know, like the most popular cars mm. type deals, because every car or or every car ever been made, when is when is there ever ever going to be a car that we know of that, that that's never going to have any problems? It's not going to happen. So I don't understand on why folks put themselves in that position, just like with the Fiero. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm just bringing it up as a, you know, what I'm saying as a quick reminder because both cars mm -hmm. are you you know your best cars for gm mm -hmm. but um as far as people putting these cars together this is what they got to realize this is how you know that this right here is one of your best cars one different two it's a rear engine three it's a chevrolet so folks mind should not even be on bad things you won't say it. Corvair has this call uh that's what it's called Corsa like with the hats that's Corsa it's a Corvair Society of America now that's a larger that's, that's the big picture um, and there's a lot of resources you can find there um so it's it's you never a little more not to make too many major modifications but subtle things like the tires um like the, I uh the interior is pretty much stock yeah. The only thing I did is I, I bought a, a I got a center console from Clark's Corvair and, and it and it looks like it, it came with the car and and I love it because I can I can put my drink I can I can put stow stuff away yeah um, and then this one is a, a manual top um, and usually in the morning when I go out I'll go usually my wife and I would do go out to an event usually when we go in the morning. You see top down in the morning, yeah. there, top down. And then on the way back, you know, we've been out in the sun for quite a while. So we go top up and we kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's a nice quiet way to, 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 to get back. Yeah. Um, this one on the interior, as far as the, uh, well, it, it's well inside, it has dynamat yeah. all through the bottom of the floor. So it, that does make a little difference on, 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 on the car. Um, The one thing that throws people off, like they've never seen the Corvair, or know anything about them is, uh, this truck I got stuff in it, but uh, you know, the truck up front, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 and the other different the other thing we've changed on this thing is we changed it to a dual master cylinder. Look at that, wonderful. Uh, which is uh, it's 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 a, it's a nice upgrade. Um, it's, it's really nice to have very the uh, good, very uh, 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 the, 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 the backup. But of course, if you're into Corvair and you're talking to people, you always you always you know finding little parts that you need or yes, parts sir. that you don't need. This is like a this is a regular carburetor. This is for a 1964 carburetor. Um, so I, a friend of mine was selling them, so I go, hey, you know, do I need them now? No. Would I need them later? Maybe. Yeah. If someone else needs them, I have them. So yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's the late model cars to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my exposure or my experience has been mostly with early models. Mm -hmm. To me, the early models, it, it, yeah, really, as far as drivability, 
they drive nice, but you gotta, you gotta have to kind of hang on to them a little bit, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't drive my 64 with one hand. I, yeah. I have a, two, you know, uh, you know uh, 10, and, 10 and two. Yeah. Now, some guys have their, their suspensions really tricked out um, and uh, they're able to drive it, but it's just my own personal preference to me. It's like, I, I drive both. I've driven both. I own both, so early and late. And I have a, also a 65 uh, coupe. And a late model, it just drives like a normal, like a regular, regular car. It, yeah. You don't even know you're driving a, uh, 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 um, a, uh, uh, a classic car. Yeah. Uh, the, as far as the Corvair, from a safe perspective, the only thing that you really have to pay attention to is uh, tire pressure. Yeah. You don't fill these up like, you know, 35 and 35 uh, of 35 fronts and 35 rears. Um, it's, you have to be, you have to, well, I'm going to be on the road uh, for a good, so the tires, the tires warm up. Yeah. Um, but again, this particular car here, on the highway, smooth, straight, and I feel confident driving, driving the car. I don't feel like, you know, you know, I, I surprise some people sometimes, pass them by. You, a lot of them don't even know what it is. You think you'll be able to uh, start it up for me? Sure. Yes, sir. Like that, y'all. Check that out. Man, that's amazing. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just wait and see what I got in the bag. It's coming soon, people. <laughs> it's going to be nice. The other difference in, in a in a Corsa, in a regular Monza, just if you just look at the rear of the car, the, on, a, on a Corsa, it always came with the silver, the silver coloring in, in, in the back here. Yeah, so y'all could tell it's all right here. Yeah. Uh, uh, some people paint their Corsa, their, their Corvairs. So if you look at a Corsa, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, like I said, this came in a 140 or turbo. I made it from 65. Made like twenty three thousand with sixty six. They made maybe close to eight thousand. Yeah. And it came in again. And it came in a uh, convertible or, or a uh, or a coupe. Um, I like the convertibles, uh, but if you're gonna put air conditioning, the one with the coupe is a lot easier. Yes, sir. It, 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 it was a, the air conditioning. I mean, whether I, on the, I think on the one forty you could get air conditioning. On a turbo, I don't think you could. But yeah. I, I may not be 100% on that. But uh, I guess a, a, a coupe is a lot easier to air conditioning uh, than, than a, than a uh, converter. Yeah, lots of places to, to stuff to leak. So I have a really good question. Sure. So about these carburetors. Uh -huh. So when you, whenever you get it to, um, whenever you get it to adjust them, because uh -huh. I, I need to show the people. Okay. Um, now, whenever you now, whenever we're ready to adjust them, so a 140 versus a 110 or a 95 or 80 or you know or 84 or whatever. So when you start talking about adjustments, what is the first thing that you look at when we look at these carburetors? Well, I mean, it all depends what we are trying to adjust. If if you have a, an idling problem or or those kind of things. Um, the one thing on 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 any of these old cars, the uh, Right back here, there is a stone filter uh, that uh, that you know filters out some of the some of the if, if your first first uh, you know protection as far as getting stuff in your car. It has, has a stone uh, stone uh, 
I filter in here. And these, you know, people forget, you know, they've, they've been on there. Some of, some of these have now been taken apart and they've been filtering for 20, 30 years and they start, you know, um, you know, getting blocked up. You don't, you don't get the, uh, uh, you don't get the, the flow of, of, of gasoline like you normally do. And those are the first things you probably look at when you have a missing or something. The first thing you do, when was the last time you changed these stones on this car? Yeah. Um, uh, so it's, it's, as far as adjustments, uh, if you do an adjustment, if, if you're putting brand new carburetors and starting fresh, it, it is a, a little complicated process, but it, there, it, there is a, a, a reason for the madness. But most of the time, once you get them, get them going, once you get your car idled and all built in, the dialed in, you're, you're, you're fine. But usually, uh, it's the little things that, that, that'll, that'll, that'll get you. Now, if you haven't changed the stones on your car for uh, the filters for 10 years or so, and all of a sudden, like, your gas bonds goes down, the run starts running a little bit rough, those are, those are those are the signs that tell you, hey, you know, there's something wrong here. And if you've taken, I've taken some of these uh, um, uh, filters out, stone filters out of some of these Corvairs, and you compare it to a brand new one, how that thing was running in the first place, you just like, how does this thing run? Uh, so it, it's it's a little thing, maintenance, awareness, and knowing get getting to know your car. Yeah. Um, when you buy an old car, I don't care what it is, you assume. Everything needs to go, go. You have to go through. I don't care if the, the guy said, you know, I just restored it. You just, you need to know your car, and you need to learn how to how to do the, either know how, or know someone who knows how. Yeah. But you just, just, you know, just don't do anything to it. Don't expect, don't expect the, the, the you know. To, to, to run on a, on, a, on, a, on a consistent basis, but you have to maintain them. It's not like you have to watch them every minute, but like, you know, I, I changed all this thing. I put, I put less than 2,000 miles a year on this car. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't matter. I change, I change the oil every year. And, and I, like I said, I have several cars, so I drive, I drive between all my, and I said, on this one, I, I'll, if I put 2,000 miles a year, it's a lot. But they're, they're, they're fun to doubt them out. Yeah. But I always change the oil. I always check the differential fluid. It, it, it's, it's, it's a checklist. Yeah. If you have a checklist, you write, you write it down. It says, okay, I got to check X, Y, and Z. And certain things you change, you check on a daily basis. Now, when I take any Corvair out of my garage, and I'm going to take it somewhere, the first thing I always do, takes two seconds, check the oil. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Did you look under the car? There's a big puddle. I I don't know. Yeah. So um, did someone come by and soften your oil? I don't know. Make it. It takes two seconds. Check your oil. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, oh, it's down a quarter. Well, if, you, if you're going, a quarter could be make the difference between, you know, three dollars worth of oil or five thousand dollars worth of engine. So you choose. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense in, in any car. Um, but I always first thing I do check the oil. Make sure it's the oil is there. Um, you know, look around. Okay, there's air in the tires. Yeah. Um, take a, I always take a quick look underneath just in case Anything something, something, to happen. Out of, something dangling or whatever. Um, uh, then the rest. And then the one thing you always have if you own a Corvair, extra fan belt. Yes, sir. If you own a Corvair and your fan belt breaks because this thing goes like I don't know, about 700 degrees different kinds of changes and uh, I've owned Corvair for 30 plus years and I had my first belt go out on me last year but I did have a belt so if you get caught on the highway in a Corvair because your belt broke and you don't have a fair belt shame on you yeah man it, I always check I mean I, every you know it's like Every every Corvair guy, if you, if, if you ask them, hey, do you have an extra, do you have an extra fan, fan belt? Ninety nine percent of them, say, yes, I do. Hey, I was I was one of those people, man. I had like two or three of them thing. Hey, I was ready to go. If something wished to happen, Ray, I was ready. You don't know what yeah, I'm saying? It, you know, it's like, uh, you, you know, you, you can only prepare so much. So, yeah. Uh, 
but a, a fan belt it, it, and, and a spare tire. I have one of these, uh, uh, you know, little guys. Uh, I always gotta have one of those, so, uh, y'all. Uh, it's, it's not that I'm planning uh, to, to uh, have a flat tire. And then uh, the other thing is, they do have knockoffs. Uh, don't forget your lead hammer. Yeah. Because it's gonna be uh, not so nice trying to trying to trying to trying to, trying to, trying to get those off. But uh -huh. again, I mean, I've been in Corvairs for. Well, I married into Corvair since I was like 30 years old, and I'm 67, 67 years old. So I've been at this for quite so, quite some time. Um, so uh, uh, I don't know everything. I don't need to know everything. I can always ask someone, or there's certain things I can do. Like I don't do paint and body. I I I, I don't have the skill set or the facility to do paint and body. So. Um, if I have an issue, I have to take it someone who, who, who can do that. Engine stuff, I, I, I have resources. Um, mechanically, I, I can do most 99% of the stuff. Because usually everything is just minor things. Uh, the one thing you always notice with Corvair is there's a lot of sheet metal. Yeah. There's a lot of sheet metal. Right. Believe it or not, there's an engine. And there's a reason why there's the sheet metals here. And why there's a reason why there's a seal in here. Um, it has, to, that's the one thing about an engine. This is air cooled. Air is drawn through here, and this is what cools. And air is drawn and it cools the cylinders. So, if you don't have the engine compartment properly sealed, you're not going to have the pressure differential. You're not going to have the efficiency of your blower. Yeah. Because you have air coming in from the bottom, so it, it, so you're you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, they put these seals here for a reason. It's not it's not cosmetic. Yeah. Oh, let's put some rubber in there. It looks nice. No, it's, it's there for a purpose. It's a mundane thing, so it's it's uh, uh, be prepared. Yes, sir. All right, Ray. Well, right. thank you very much, thank man. You, man. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. So, well, that right there was Ray's 1965 Chevy Corvair Corsa. Super nice. Look at that. Wonderful. Excellent, got the knockoff wheels. Excellent, man. And so you got your badge on too, so you'll know what type of car it is always. And it's gonna always have this right here as well to, to let you know that it's an authentic Corsa. And of course, 140 horsepower engine. Very fun car, y'all. Well, most definitely. All right, y'all, so that right there is in this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Please share this video with everybody, because man, Corvairs are wonderful. Very, very unique cars, but also wonderful cars. And we want them to stay a lot. Most definitely, where's your boy for your boy? See?